I'm particularly glad to host tonight the Blue Prize of 2013 in my embassy. I really appreciate Mr. Franco Pomilio's invitation to open this historical house of a contemporary art competition amongst the 20 internationally recognized young artists investigating the theme of transparency. The presence of the extraordinary writer, he has some contemporary problems. Uh, the presence of the extraordinary writer, Mrs. Yung Chang, makes uh, this ceremony even more unique. Moreover, I perfectly share the prize philosophy as expressed by Franco Pomilio's work. Blue Prize connects art with innovation, ethics, and the contemporary concept of interactive citizenship. Transparency is also an essential value for contemporary diplomacy. Today, diplomats are expected to be more open to citizens and more aware of public opinion's role in international relations. Transparency, therefore, would perfectly lie the basis for this new and interactive modern diplomacy. My services are not as good as a familiar blue bride. <laughs> Fast but not reliable. Transparency, therefore, would perfectly lay the basis for this new and interactive modern diplomacy. I strongly believe that open diplomacy should follow both directions. Bottom down, diplomats are called to share information in order to make civil society better understand the most relevant decisions of foreign policy. And three part. Bottom up, the civil society should use embassies and diplomacy as a new media in order to put forward its demands and its proposals. Therefore, since my arrival as ambassador to Belgium, I decided to open, to open the residence to a wide range of activities, from institutional ceremonies to business focused meetings, to cultural initiatives, and so it is evident my interest in opening this house to the unique contemporary art exhibition. Indeed, I'm seriously committed in sharing information with civil society, also by using social media, and I'm convinced that this process will be enhanced during the Italian presidency of the European Union. In this framework, I welcome Franco Comilio's decision to present tonight a new project involving young artists from all the European Mediterranean countries. Indeed, the Art Award 2014 by Comilio Group will be a great chance to foster a more effective interaction among citizens and institutions throughout Europe and its Mediterranean partners. I wish all the best to the winner of tonight's Miss Blue Prize, as well as the Art Award 2014. Thank you. Close relationship between producer. 
user and consumer. So we really think that the transparency could be a big issue um, to, to let artists challenges for us, giving us suggestions, giving, giving us uh, information uh, that we can use uh, trying to, uh, try to, to build a, a new uh, language, a new relationship between the big institution. Uh, we have a lot of institutions in, uh, in Europe, more than 28. Uh, the bigger one is the European Union, but uh, different languages, different histories, different culture. And we need to understand how to relate between institutions and cities. But this is a, a, a really a big challenge because it's not very easy to understand and, 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 be, and, be, uh, and be wise how to, how to use uh, communication of values, <laughs> communication of very uh, high sensitive items to, uh, and, and deliver it to the people. Uh, it's very, very, very clear for many of us how to, how to advertise, how to sell a product, how to, how to involve the consumer, but we don't know much about this specific relationship. And we think that art is usually very close to the, to the future. It could help us to, to find new codes. So this is the meaning of this, uh, of this prize. And I'm very, very grateful to the Italian Embassy and the Italian Ambassador, Mr. Bastianelli, who host uh, this first edition of the Blue Prize. And I hope you will appreciate it. I'm very thankful to, the, to all the artists that are here, coming from different countries and bringing different cultures. And I hope that still the words from, from the words about the, coming from uh, this uh, very important writer uh, in China will, will help us to understand much more because we, we are not uh, related to visual arts but we are related to all the arts that help us to communicate each other. Thank you very much. here tonight to say a few words about the role transparency plays in my writing. Um, I was born in China in the 1950s. I grew up there when China was a part of darkness under the tyranny of Mao. And the country was completely closed and, uh, um, and the, uh, we, we were home to the outside world Place, and all foreigners were awful people. And when the, so when the boys played guerrilla warfare, which was their game, the bad guys would have rose stories glued up to their noses to show they were foreigners, because the Chinese foreigners have longer and sharper noses than the Chinese. And the, the, uh, and the baddies would say hello all the time, because in propaganda films, evil foreigners were always drinking Coca-Cola and saying hello. So we all thought hello was a swell. And I, in that world, I, in my heart, I wanted to be a writer. And I used to lie on the ground and look at the clouds and imagine what was happening behind the clouds. But I couldn't even say to myself, I wanted to be a writer. Because in those days, nearly all writers were persecuted. In the center of the gulag, driven to suicide, some were even executed. Even writing for oneself was dangerous. And on my 16th birthday, in the Cultural Revolution, I wrote my first poem about this, you know, this world um, full of um, suppressed information, full of darkness, I and mean, it seems that some parts of these windows in your mind were kept shut. And then, so I wrote a poem to that effect. And then I heard the door bang, and the red bars, I don't know if you heard this, 
because a Pinnacle Revolution had come to raid our flat. And I had quickly rushed to the toilet. Um, I tore up my poem and flushed it down the toilet. Um, and that ended my first poem. But it didn't end my desire to write. In the following years, I was um, exiled to the edge of the Himalayas and worked as a peasant. And later, I worked as an electrician. When I was spreading manure in the paddy fields, and when I was checking electricity supplies on top of the electricity poles, and my mind was always writing with an invisible pen, but I just couldn't put pen to paper. And in 1976, Mao died, and China began to change. And in 1978, for the first time, scholarships for going abroad were awarded on academic basis. I sat for a national exam, I did reasonably well, so I became one of the first group of 14 people to go to Britain to study. And as far as I know, I'm the first one of the Sichuan province, a province of 90 million people to go to the West. To study. So when I got my doctorate in linguistics in 1982, I was so lucky. I think China was still closed, uh, still was beginning to open, um, and I was the first person from communist China ever to get a doctorate from a British university. Now, but I still didn't write until my mother came to London to stay with me. Um, this was her first time abroad in 1988. And for the first time, outside the social and the political confines of the Chinese society, she was able to open her mind and her heart. In other words, she became transparent. Her life, she told me about her life, that the life of my grandmother, and uh, her relationship with my father. And when she started, she couldn't stop. She stayed with me for six months, and she talked every day. So by the time she left London, she had left me 60 hours of cable trains, and I had started writing Val Swans, which is I think, the reason why I'm here. So I think Val Swans, I was able to write about swans, thanks to my mother to become transparent. And uh, my mother, you know, Wild Swans became a success, and because of the transparency, you know, people often ask me, how, um, what is the trick of your success? Because, you know, Wild Swans is translated into more languages, and uh, tens of millions of people have read it. And so people say, what's the the uh, trick. Actually, the trick is the transparency in the book because my mother bared herself and uh, told the stories of this family and I conveyed it in the most sort of as transparent a way as I could manage. I didn't let language or fancy expressions stand in the way of the writing. And that's how it became a sort of a, a global success. Um, and my mother had, um, my mother only started wanting her daughter to understand her. Now she has understood her from tens of millions of people all over the world. And after Wild Swans, I wrote uh, with my husband a biography about John Mao. And I think from that moment on, I was um, somehow not dedicate my work. I, I found it um, um, what I really wanted to do is to bring transparency to the suppressed um, areas. And you know, we dug our mouth, we dug out many new materials, and we, we actually we shed light on the, the, the dark tyranny. Um, and um, and now, so as a result, I mean, we wrote a very good about Bill Mao. And, and my next book is also about going to be about uh, Chinese, uh, the 
was it with the nostalgia session, the last um, sort of imperial ruler, is also about an area and about a woman about whom much has been suppressed and there has been myths and, uh, and uh, withholding of information. And uh, so I can say that my whole writing now is about bringing transparency um, to, the, to the people, uh, to, be, to my readers. Thank you very much. Unite in Pomino Bruma. The goal of this edition 
is to import secondary art school from Europe and the Mediterranean. The young talented artist will be invited to explore the concept of the rhinoceros. The project is open to all artistic techniques from painting to sculpture to photography. The award will be composed of an international gallery and give the winning artist the opportunity to exhibit their work and the hour in Pescara. Buonasera a tutti, grazie per essere qui. Sono Simone Gaglioni, come diceva Martina Calabalardini, ho curato il Don Prize. Sono qui in versione per presentarvi anche questo progetto, ormai arrivato alla terza edizione, dell'Oscar Pomino Art Award. 